Then I took a smidge and applied it down there. This one's wife, Jam Hunt. Number three is found. Hello, I'm HG Tudor. If you haven't watched my video, The Jam 50, I would encourage you to do so, as you'll have a jolly good laugh at the prospective recipients of the 50 jars of strawberry jam that this one's wife has been pinging to people as part of a promotional push to support the launch of American Riviera Orchard retirement homes. I considered who might have been the recipients of the jam and what their likely response would be. And you'll be thoroughly entertained by watching that video, so I'd encourage you to do so. Whilst I considered who might be the actual recipients, we're learning more about who has been the recipients of a jar of strawberry jam. And number three has been found, yes, right up there in the heady environment of the top five. The person who has received number three has been revealed as a consequence of their publication on Instagram. The person who has been deemed to be the fortunate and privileged recipient of a jar of strawberry jam, this time it looks like the label has managed to stay on, but again, as you can see, there is this weird preoccupation at sending a jar of strawberry jam in a basket of lemons. Mm. Lemons don't make strawberry jam, this one's wife. Strawberries do, which is all the more entertaining because basically you're almost advertising that you're showing off a bit of a lemon. Clearly, there are plenty of lemons in Monty shit show, and therefore she sticks them in there along with some flowers and garnish in effect and plonks the jar in the middle of it. It would be much better if she presented it in a nice box that would, uh, that would perhaps contain some more information about what she's actually doing. But here we are. Number three has been revealed, and it's landed in the hands of Kelly McKee Zaffin. In case you're not familiar with who that is, she's the woman who is frequently seen out and about with this one's wife on pap walks, and they went to the ski resort together recently. She's also the grieving mother of a boy who aged nine. It's rather interesting that this one's wife seems to have a rather macabre preoccupation with being around grieving parents. She did so with regard to the New York summit, didn't she? And here she is hanging out with Kelly McKee Zaffin. Thus, number three has been found, and it's not a particularly prominent individual, but essentially a Californian housewife. Not that there's necessarily anything wrong with that. But this precipitated a further discussion with my PR expert, as more of these jam jars from the 50s start to appear. And she provided me with her insight with regard to how this one's wife has got it wrong again. It's evident that this one's wife has distributed these 50 exclusive jars to fellow Californian housewives that she thinks of as friends. As you know, she doesn't actually have any friends. She just has appliances that are there to do her bidding, that are there to be subjected to the pursuit of the prime aims. In essence, fair enough. She wants to delight privately these acquaintances with some homemade goods. But, as my PR expert points out, isn't she looking to plan a billion-dollar lifestyle American Riviera Orchard retirement homes empire? And if that's the case, carting these off to your so-called friends isn't the way to go about it. Indeed, she needs to have a much more effective PR plan, with the first step, of course, of the product unveiling, being the most crucial one. And what are we getting? Californian housewives posting on their Instagram pages that they've received a jar of her jam 
quoting American Riviera Orchard, but showing it off, demonstrating that it's arrived in a bowl of lemons. To my mind, that immediately creates a fail, because people will be saying, why is the jam sent with lemons when it's strawberry jam? That doesn't make sense. And rather than focus on, ooh, is it good jam? Is it tasty jam? Is it nutritious jam? Is it ethically sourced jam? What's the story behind the jam? People's first reaction is, why has it been sent in a bowl of lemons? That doesn't make sense. And immediately detracts from the impact that it's meant to have. Once again, demonstrating that this one's wife clearly hasn't listened or appreciated anything with regard to PR and brand management. Not a surprise. She thinks that she knows everything. We regularly see how she gets this wrong. And it's because of her narcissism. Her narcissism tells her that she is the brand management guru. That she knows all there is to know about PR. So she never listens to competent advice. My PR expert explained that to do this properly, what you would do would be you'd create a strategic list of food bloggers and lifestyle influencers who appeal to your target audience. So that isn't the sugars, because they're in a low socioeconomic group, but she needs to work out who's my target audience, who are they? And basically, she's aiming at people who've essentially got more money than sense, who are interested in homeware, baking, gardening, all of that type of thing. So she needs to identify the target audience and then should identify alongside that who are the food bloggers and lifestyle influencers that cater to that target audience. Now, my PR expert explains there are plenty of those in California, so it shouldn't be a problem. And what she should be doing is giving a heads up as to what an exclusive product they're receiving, what it is for them to unwrap and taste. That in actual fact, she should be notifying them ahead of delivery as to what is coming, because that creates a buzz and also ensures that the product is not unwanted. Those of you who've watched my the Jam 50 video will know that in many instances, the recipients in this fictional representation rejected the gift, but it makes a pertinent point. In order to ensure maximum impact and avoid potential embarrassment that you only see, say, five or six of the jars being advertised on Instagram, leading you to think, where did the other 45 go? In the bin? In the hedge? What you ought to have done is get in touch with these people ahead of time, explain what was on the way, and ensure that the influencer and the relevant blogger was content to receive it. Essentially, you're not dropping unexpected shit on them. Then, what she ought to be doing is creating a story about the jam and put it in writing together with the package. What it is, where it's come from, who's involved in it, how was it made, and why was it made? The idea is to try and make the product sound unique because at the end of the day, there's lots of different types of strawberry jam. So just sending a jar of strawberry jam in itself is completely lacking imagination and doesn't have any impact. You need to create a story around it. So for instance, my PR experts states that you might suggest that the strawberries used in the jam were planted by America's youngest royals, Lily and Archie. There's a story in that. Or... Perhaps they were exclusively fertilised by the excrement deposited by this one's wife's royal chickens of authenticity. Perhaps the jam was cooked with sugar from British colonies' plantations using child labour. Well, maybe not that idea, but you get the point. The fact is, there are hundreds of thousands of similar products on the market, and if she plans to sell it to make her millions, she needs a strong legend to go with the product. It can only be partially true as well. After all, nobody's actually going to specifically come to check if the berries were indeed planted by Archie. And you would think, given the revisions of history that this one's wife regularly engages in, she'd be well up for creating some legend which is only half true, or perhaps isn't true at all. But the point is, she could create all of this to make it sound exciting, to make it sound unique, and it would make a splash. 
But it demonstrates once again the inherent arrogance of this woman because she thinks that the mere fact that the jam is hers is enough to make it the most special jam in the world. And it's not. Once again, she believes, oh, it's my jam. That in itself is enough. Everybody will be thrilled to receive the jam. And it shows just how self-absorbed she is, how she operates with that sense of entitlement, and how she just doesn't get it when it comes to brand management as to how she ought to be doing it. She probably has been advised in terms similar to that of my PR expert, but once again, she doesn't listen. If she were to go down this route, the food and lifestyle bloggers would receive something they get to see for the first time and ahead of everybody else. They then taste it and write about it in detail to their target audience. They highlight the specifics of aroma, taste, what it can be paired with, etc. And then, to push the sales, that assists. It's not interesting for the food bloggers and journalists to be getting the product after this one's wife has already had her friend post about it. Because then there's no uniqueness associated with it. Everybody's already seen the package, the half-peeling label, the jam spread itself. We've already heard from them. It's sweet. I like it. It isn't news anymore. My PR expert summed it up as saying, it really, it really does take an utter moron to cheapen your own exclusive product like that. If it's the case you can't wait for your friends to taste it as soon as possible, at least then ask them not to post anything before the journalists and the bloggers have had a chance to publish their views and reviews. That's basic product communication. And it's simple enough for any entry-level PR consultant to draft such a plan. And they probably did. But once again, this one's wife doesn't listen doesn't apply it and her product isn't launched in the appropriate way it's half-baked it doesn't work and of course it ends up being ridiculed once again thus we now know who got jar number three but more importantly you're able to see the way that her narcissism once again gets in the way of a successful product launch and how like so many other things she gets it completely wrong I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.